All right. So while waiting for the others, do you guys have a question or clarification? All right. So an answer coming from Mr. Raven Gino. And one more thing, guys. To those, to those who haven't uploaded their uh, one minute video introduction, okay, please submit them now okay, so that I can learn more about you guys. There's actually a total of 40 students uh, in this subject, but I'm only seeing 15, okay, 15 people who have cooperated with getting with this one. All right, so are you guys ready now to continue our discussion? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, so the next one right here is corporate spice, or sometimes we call this one espionage. So corporate spice is uh, a corporate or a company who will hire a spy or a hacker to gain knowledge you know, or to take advantage with the uh, data or information that they can steal or they will be able to steal from the other company, okay? So they do this one, you know, uh, due to competition. So they want to uh, uh, make an advanced, uh, maybe plan, advanced plan or advanced uh, solution regarding with the problems that will occur. Okay, from the other companies, uh, from the other companies that they're planning to uh, implement or do. Okay, so un unscrupulous companies hire corporate spies to gain a competitive advantage. Okay, so I'm saying unscrupulous. They are the bad companies okay, or an honest or not honest companies. Okay, so they, they do this one just to gain a competitive advantage over the other companies. Okay, so again, we call this one corporate spice. We also have here an ethical employees. Well, uh, this is an ethical employees. It's just an employee who's going to sell or who's going to exploit the security of his or her company, okay? So why is he doing that? Maybe because that person uh, gets embarrassed by his boss every time, or uh, maybe his boss is just not kind, or he has a hard, I mean, super angry maybe with his boss and then you know he just uh throw his anger by exploiting or the security weakness of that company okay so um, uh some analytic employees doesn't really have hard feelings with your bosses or to that company they just maybe wanted to gain money okay so some analytic employees sells the confidential oops confidential information uh, to the other companies. Okay? They're selling uh, this important information uh, just to gain money okay? or in exchange with money. Okay? So those are unethical employees. Okay? They don't have sportsmanship. And we also have here cyber extortionists. So uh, when you see cyber extortionists, so this will torture you, you know, or this will keep on blackmailing you uh, that he will uh, erase all of your data. Or sometimes, mostly, uh, cyber extortionists will just lock your computer. Okay, so this uh, guy will just lock your computer and then unless you pay him a certain amount of money and then he will give you the password for you to gain access with your computer. Okay, so they are the people who's like, who's going to hostage someone but not really someone someone's computer okay in exchange with money and then we have here cyber terrorists okay so i'm saying cyber terrorists this one are the dangerous people okay so mostly 
they just really hate the government or they just really hate their country the, or the people uh, who's uh, like in higher position, like the president, the senators, or maybe they just really hate the government of their country. Okay, or may, maybe for political reasons. So they're going, they're willing to destroy or damage someone's server or someone's computer, you know, just to uh, maybe uh, point their anger. Okay? Because when we say cyber terrorists, so they don't really need money. Okay? They just really wanted to destroy someone's uh, computer or someone's software or someone's server. Okay? If that person is asking the money, Let's say uh, he destroyed the website of the SSS and he's asking for money for him to bring it back to the normal way. And that one is habit extortionist. But if that person is really wanted to destroy uh, an organization or a government, we call that one cyber terrorist. Okay. And then cyber warfare, this one is like uh, the war. Like we have World War One, World War Two before, right? But when you say cyber warfare, we also have like war between countries. Okay. But we call that one cyber warfare. Okay. So this one uh, could attack, let's say USA will attack the uh, specific government of the uh, Russia. Okay. So we all that 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 one is already a cyber warfare. Okay. Or this crippling a certain country. Okay. Or basically, you wanted to uh, bring down that country. Okay, so we could see this one, maybe, maybe I'm not really sure. Okay, with China, or with the USA, or with Russia. Okay, so we are the countries who's really good when it comes to hacking or destroying data of governments' in, uh, important information. So if that is happening, you know, from other countries, well, that one cyber warfare. Okay, it's like war between uh, two countries, All right? And then we have here uh, internet network attacks, which is called malware. So as of now, I will clarify it. When we say malware, it is the head of everything, okay? So it is the main category of unwanted application, unwanted tool, unwanted uh, software, or anything that is unwanted with our computer, okay? Why is that? Because the virus that we are keep, you know, keep on saying that ah, virus nyan, the virus nyan, ganyan, ganyan. That is just under the types of malware. Okay, so in fact, that is number one. Okay, so the first one is the virus, of course. So when say virus, of course, it's potential damaging program that affects or infects computer. Okay, so this can be done in our computer or via cell phone. Okay, so those are viruses and we also have worm which is kind of similar with virus but uh, a little bit and um, not that harmful okay you could see that virus is 100% harmful but worm is maybe 50% yeah, 50% harmful because this will just uh, copy uh, itself that's why it's called worm okay be easily spread to your system okay so yeah, it will not destroy your data, but as time goes by, your memory or your storage will be uh, full, okay? And then in no time, maybe after two days or three days, having that worm, your computer will shut down for no reason, okay? Or you will just keep on receiving error that you have to uh, clear the cache file or uh, clear the error file due to uh, having a full of memory. And then we have here the Trojan horse, which is uh, like a little bit more harmful uh, when it comes to virus. We can see that this is uh, under a virus, which is a Trojan horse. Okay, so this one is a program that hides within or looks like a legitimate program. Okay, so you will not notice this one right away. So that is uh, one uh, difference when it comes to virus and then Trojan horse. So a virus uh, will give you uh, a notice right away in your computer uh, got virus but when you see trojan horse so this might take time maybe a week or maybe two weeks of usage of your, uh, your computer okay so a trojan horse does not replicate itself 
or other computers or devices. So this one will just like uh, sneak or uh, this one, or it could be a backdoor with your, at your computer. Okay, so some Trojan horse uh, will just easily, dis, uh, will just uh, slowly destroy your computer. But some Trojan horse is just like acting uh, a backdoor wherein someone can access your computer. Okay, and then we have here the rootkit, one of the most common or famous uh, of virus or hacking group. So it is a program that hides in a computer or a mobile device and allows someone from a remote location to take full com uh, control of the computer or device. So this rootkit is uh, not really harmful, but it might just slow down your computer. Okay, so uh, why did I say that this one is the most common one? That is because uh, in this application or in this kind of virus, they can open your file without you noticing it, or they can control your computer without you noticing it. Okay, so it feels like nothing's happening, but as time goes by, your uh, this usage okay will uh, rise up for no reason. Like let me just show this one to you guys. So um, under task manager, we have here the CPU usage and then memory usage. Okay. So normally, if your computer is in idle, it will only consume maybe twenty percent or twenty percent or forty percent of your CPU. And if you're doing something, maybe it will rise up to fifty, to sixty, and then to seventy. Okay. So uh. One way for you to know, uh, to know if you have a rootkit to your computer, let's say you are in idle, you're not doing anything, you haven't even opened any application, okay? And then suddenly it will rise up to 99 for three seconds or for four seconds or five seconds. Like your computer uh, will hang, okay, with no reason, all right? So the same with memory, okay? So this might be the case when it comes to worm, like you're not doing anything, you're not even transferring anything, but your memory keeps on, uh, you know, fluctuating. Like it should be stable like this, right? 6.5 gigabyte of memory out of 50. But once it goes up to 12 or 13, maybe someone is inside your computer or maybe you have a worm, all right? So those are the ways or simple ways for you to monitor if you have a virus or a rootkit or a worm to your computer. But for a Trojan horse, that might be uh, difficult. Okay. All right. And then we have here this spyware. So basically, this one is quite the same with rootkit, but instead of having a full access, the spyware is just there to uh, monitor you. Okay. So they can also collect information, but uh, not to the full extent they, that they can control your computer. So they're just basically spying on you, okay? So without you maybe, yeah, without you noticing, they might uh, open your camera, okay? Or they might uh, on your uh, audio, okay? That's also kind of creepy, you know? Someone's watching you without you uh, noticing, or without you knowing. And then the adware. So this is very common nowadays, like we can really uh, remove this one unless you avail a premium version of an application. Okay, so adware is just an advertisement or unsolicited advertisement that will just pop up from nowhere. Okay, like for example, you're watching an anime. Okay, so most of them uh, will give you uh, a captcha or will give you a picture wherein you have to choose this one and there and there just to say that you are not uh, a bot or not a computer. So yeah, or you have to watch this uh, advertisement first before you can gain access uh, with what you're trying to access to their website. Okay. So that is adware. All right, so are we clear so far regarding with the types of malware? Yes, sir. So, and you... Okay, so what's the question? Uh, 
Wala kayong gustong itanong when it comes to viruses? Ah, uh, sir? Yes? For adware po ba, do they harmful po ba siya? Ah, uh, not really. Okay. So, so, ano lang po siya? Like, it doesn't not... contain any any uh, virus or um, it, it could be harmful, especially like, ah, uh, Itong website. Like, let's say this is uh, an anime website, right? And then right here, there is a picture uh, free to play. Let's say this is just a game. And let's say it's free to play. And you will give, uh, it will give you 1,000 diamonds, etc., etc. So uh, maybe 50-50 that that one is a legit, legitimate application or uh, 50% is it's, uh, another website wherein uh, they will gain access to your computer. Like just by clicking that one, then you've downloaded uh, something already okay, without you knowing it. So pwedeng ganun. Then tapos, kala mo game lang siya, tapos in-execute mo, yun pala virus na. Okay. So to be safe, do not click uh, unnecessary or if you don't need to go on that specific uh, link, then do not visit that one. Thank you, sir. But uh, the advertisements on our YouTube, okay, so uh, har- one naman siya, harmless naman siya. Since dun naman sila kumikita ng pera just by you watching their advertisement. Alright, so any other concerns? Alright, so I guess, man. So let us now proceed to the next one. So how how virus spread via evil message? So we have two scenarios right here. So as you guys can see, we have here the author or the creator of the virus. Okay, and then they've sent it to someone's email. Okay, and then we have a uh, first scenario here, wherein this person opened that email. Okay, so here's what happened. They've just activated the virus. But here's another person, okay, wherein uh, since it's unsolicited email, like he doesn't know that uh, person or what he, is he or she trying to uh, wants you to open. So he didn't open it or she didn't open it. So that is why the virus uh, didn't activate it. didn't uh, uh, get activated here in the Okay. So yeah. Most viruses needs to be open or needs to be activated before they can uh, harm your computer. Okay, so even though you have the virus itself to your computer, but you didn't execute it or you didn't open it to your computer, uh, they can still uh, harmless. Okay, or they are uh, will not be able to harm your computer. Okay, so if possible, just ignore them or just delete those uh, unknown applications of yours especially if it's free. Okay. Well, not all free is uh, harmful. It's just that, you know, if it's outside the Play Store, like for example, we have Play Store in our uh, cell phone, right? Smartphone. If it's outside the uh, Play Store, where in you download the, uh, you will download the APK to a certain website. So 50-50, that, that one might contain a virus. So the one that is in our Play Store is 100% uh, safe and secure. So we've checked uh, all of the applications on our Google Play Store. All right. So are we clear so far regarding with this one? Oh, so guys. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So the next one here is uh, botnet, zombie, and then bot. So let's talk about botnet first. So when see botnet, it is actually a group of computer. Okay. Like it could be any computer, computer on our computer shops, computer on uh, someone's house, or any computer. Okay. So they are uh, the computers. Uh, who are 
compromised or who have been planted by bots. Okay, so how do they do this one? So we could see that this one is not really a virus, but they are now controlling your computer. Okay, so they mean no harm to your computer. It's just that they're going to use your IP. Okay, they're going to use your IP to uh, vote for something. Like because we have some websites where in uh, the majority of the votes uh, will win. One good example of that one is WikiLeaks or a Wikipedia, wherein it is an open source, but majority should accept your inputs or your changes uh, regarding with that article. So in that case, uh, most of them will use botnet. Okay, they will use a lot of individual uh, IP of the computers of other people, and yeah, so to vote that they accept the uh, votation, okay. And then we have here zombie wherein it can actually like spread the virus wherein uh, this PC is now uh, under botnet, but since they are like connected in under one network, okay, so the other computers who's connected in that network might get, uh, get a virus or get a botnet uh, application, okay? So yeah, that's now zombie, let's see. 15 uh, computers. For botnet, it could be one only, okay, or two. And then bot is the program that will perform repetitive tasks on a network such as sending via email or spread virus and other malware. Okay, so this is how they do this one. They plan uh, a bot queue, and then once you become uh, a botnet, then it will now spread in no time. Okay, and then it will form a zombie, okay, a group of zombie. Okay, so how to recognize if your computer is functioning as a zombie? So we have here the bot maker. Okay, so this one will just send uh, maybe one uh, botnet, or we'll just plant one botnet to one computer, okay? And then as you guys can see, this computer is connected with public internet or to other uh, computers, wherein maybe as time goes by, okay, maybe after one minute or two minutes, it is now passing those botnet to the other computers who's connected in that network, okay? And then it spread, 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 okay? so. Uh, as long as they are under one connection of a network or uh, a network to a network. Okay, so it's also possible. So mostly if you are under uh, a zombie or a bot or a botnet, so you have unusually high disability. Okay. And it runs slower than normal internet connection because the uh, bot master is still controlling some of the features of your computer. And then connected devices becoming increasingly unresponsive, okay? Because the uh, highly usage of transferring the botnet or the bot application is not being done, okay? So that is why we have here uh, unresponsive connections. All right. So any questions so far regarding with botnets, zombies, and bot? Hola, po. All right. So I guess what is his name, Mr. Emerson? It's now gone due to power interruption. Anyway, then we have here the DOS attack or the denial of service attack. Well, this one means no harm. Okay, it's just that the goal of DOS attack is to bring down someone's server. Okay, so one very good example of this one is, let's say, a certain application or a certain software, or let's say a game, okay? So it is a game wherein it's only limited for 10,000 players, all right? And then in that uh, game, someone is wanted to, you know, uh, bring down that game. Okay? Maybe they hated the creator of that game or maybe they just wanted to uh, bring down that game, okay? And he views DOS attack, okay? 
So DOS attack is a denial of service wherein uh, you're only going to use one computer, or it could be done by many computers actually. But mostly one computer is enough, wherein in that computer will uh, create a lot of individual accounts. Okay, of course he's going to use uh, a certain software. Okay, he cannot do that one uh, by doing it manually. Like he will log in ten thousand accounts. Like he needs to register ten thousand accounts and then log in it to the uh, game. Uh, uh, 10,000 consecutively. So no, it's not like that. So it's going to use a software wherein uh, it can uh, log in okay, 10,000 people with the use of one computer only. Okay, so when that happened, of course, the following users was going to log into his game uh, will not be able to log in anymore. Even though there's only one computer, or there's only one player who is log in on that computer. So in that case, the other players will not be able to log in. Thus, will bring down the server okay, if that keeps on happening, especially that no one will be able to uh, play that game. Okay, And then we also have here distributed DOS, wherein, uh, let's say, you wanted to bring down a really big server or a really big company. So in that case, you're now going to need a zombie army Okay, so it is a multiple computers wherein we are attacking a certain network or a certain server. Okay, so instead of 10,000, we now need 100,000 of uh, users. So we call that one DDoS or distributed DOS. So they're now going to use other uh, people's computer to attack a certain server okay, without you noticing it. So when... Uh, good solution for that one is just basically a firewall, okay? So that is why firewall is very important, okay? So turning on your firewall uh, will uh, reduce the uh, risk of having uh, a DDoS attack or DOS attack, All right? And then we have here the backdoor. So this is basically uh, quite straightforward. So when you see backdoor, it is someone who will be able to bypass someone's uh, computer's security. Like, of course, most of our computers will ask a uh, password, right? So in that case, if that person knows how to bypass that one, then he has a backdoor. Okay, So it could be done by, you know, just putting an executable application via flash drive, or the others will just use a script wherein they can disable your password and then uh, pass through without uh, putting your password. Okay. So yeah, that's it for backdoor. And then we have here spoofing. So spoofing is a kind of uh, way for you to uh, gain data. So this is mostly used uh, to hear or to get uh, important data or important information. So we have two types of spoofing. So we have email spoofing and then we have IP spoofing. For email spoofing, so you're maybe targeting someone's uh, email, okay, wherein that person will send a specific information or a very important information wherein it is maybe uh, uh, having a content of bank accounts maybe. Well, I don't know. But let's just say that uh, the email or the content of that email is very important. Wherein just by getting uh, the content of that one will give you a lot of money. So let's say uh, bank account information. Okay. So uh, we have here uh, like a middleman. Okay. Wherein he will act as a legitimate uh, receiver. And then... Uh, of course, he will read it first and then he will now send it to the other uh, people wherein he's really going to send it. So without the other uh, people uh, noticing that there is a middleman, okay, so it feels like to them, the sender and the receiver, nothing's happened. But in reality, we have this uh, spoofing person or a person who's uh, doing a spoofing strategy. Okay, so they now uh, gain an information uh, with what you are trying to send to the other 
at a secret. Okay? And we also have here IP spoofing, wherein you're going to create uh, a look-alike or like 100% a look-alike of a certain website. And you will just uh, change the IP, wherein supposedly it will be sent to the official uh, uh, website, but they are now using your website, so it will be sent to your database instead. Like, for example, maybe they are paying okay, via uh, ATM card. So, of course, they have to uh, put the uh, bank's account information, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, instead of the company, you are the one who's going to receive the payment. It is you who's going to receive the payment. Okay, uh, It will now uh, deposit it to your account instead of to the uh, official uh, website or official company. Okay. So that is IP spoofing. All right. So this one is very uh, dangerous when it comes to uh, online payment. So any questions so far up to this point? Oh, well, guys. All right, so none coming from Mr. Uh, or Miss Audrey, and that Audrey. Right, so I hope to the others who are not responding right now. I'm Mr. It's Mr. Audrey. All right, so sorry for that. So I'm not really sure where is your last name. And that or Audrey. Because some people has a name of Audrey where they are female. All right. So if you guys do not have a question, then let's now proceed to the next one. So here are the simple things on how to uh, avoid uh, getting a network attack okay, or internet attack. So uh, here's my advice. Antivirus is good, okay. especially if you're really going to use the premium one, okay. like the one that uh, you're going to pay, okay, or a paid uh, uh, call this one antivirus. Because if it's just a crap version or a free version of uh, antivirus. That might add, okay, that might add uh, for you to get hacked. So one reason why uh, they keep on you know, uh, cracking files, they keep on uh, spreading uh, privacy. So I think, yeah, think of it. So they will gain nothing from it because uh, you didn't even pay them, okay? You didn't uh, uh, even... Uh, sign up or log in for them to uh, gain uh, something. So in that case, they are now gaining via backdoor, okay? So uh, mostly, okay, they will install a backdoor to that uh, crack application where they can gain uh, control with your computer or it will uh, record uh, some important information of your computer and then it will be sent uh, to their database. So that is where they are gaining, okay? So that is why do not use a crap version or a free version of antivirus. So if you really want to protect your computer, just use the uh, premium one, okay? The one that we need to pay first before we can get the real uh, uh, application, okay? What do you call that one? The uh, product ID. Okay, wherein you have to put that one for you to activate your uh, antivirus. Okay, second is this is for free. Okay, just always turn on your Windows Defender. Okay, if you cannot afford uh, a premium version of antivirus, just turn on your Windows Defender and Windows Firewall. So, in that case, 80% uh, that will protect you from viruses or from malwares. So it is much safer to use your default uh, 
defender or antivirus okay, than by using a crack version. So that is my only advice. All right. So again, for firewall, so it can block uh, unwanted uh, application or unwanted uh, IP address, okay, or it can block DDoS. Okay. So we have two firewalls actually: the firewall that is inside of our computer, and then the file firewall of our browser. So you can turn on both of them. Okay. So in that way, you'll have a much safer uh, browsing the internet. All right, so again, we don't have enough time uh, anymore. So we'll just continue the rest on part three. All right, so goodbye for now, guys, and see you guys on part three.